For the 100 day project this year, I'm gonna be incorporating tea bags into um, creating uh, various papers and collage and art. And I've been asked quite a few questions about how I am preparing the tea bags because some of the ones I have, I've dried a lot of them over the last several months. Uh, my husband makes batches of tea uh, so that he puts them in pitchers and we, we go through a lot of that. So I've been saving them all. That's why I have so many. But I have been asked about the different tea bags because I have a couple different kinds. This one reminds me of a pillow. It's just kind of a little square. And that tea is by Celestial Tea. And this one's an apple spice. I really like this one because it has a little pink hue to it when it dries. And so I just have a, a dish towel that I dry them on. And that's that brand. And then the other ones, the ones I really, really like um, are the ones that fold. And I'll show you what I mean here. Um, I have quite a few in here. I just wanted to show you how I dry them. They, they're they a folded tea bag. So I think you just say these are like the ones you have the strings on that you dunk. And it's folded so that there's two sides to it. And then it joins at the top. And so I've been asked, well, how do you, you know, where do you get those long, really big tea bags? And they're, they're these tea bags. And when they're dry and I've opened them, they look like this. So here's what it looks like when it's, sealed and it has like this little fold and then it's like stapled or there's a little string that's tied to it. So this is basically the same tea bag. And so then after they're dried and I open them up, I can clean out the tea and then I'm ready to use them. So I basically just sit them out and all of these that are these folded tea bags, I guess you're the dunker tea bags. Um, this brand is called Twinnings. It's an ultra spice chai tea. It's one of my favorites. And then I have some others that I use too. I've got a Long Life, which is a, um, this is a green tea with mint. Bigelow, these two are Bigelow brands. These also have this um, folded style. So you do have a lot of brands that will be like that. And then of course, there's even round ones too. I've got some other teas that are round. The little pouches are round instead of square. But like I said, I just placed them down. Um, this one here is another one of my favorites. This one is the Long Life Tea. Um, this one's a little different. I knew I had one in here. Let me show it to you dry so that it'll make sense. But this is, it looks like a rectangular pouch. But when it dries, I cut off the bottom and then I dump the tea out and there's these, um, this one, I've cut this one. Hold on, let me show you this one. There's, the string is inside the bag, but it remains this shape. So I think that's really cool. That's one of my, next to these long ones, it's my favorite. And that brand is Longleaf. And what's really kind of fun about Longleaf is that on the back, it's almost like there's a, uh, what is it called? A, um, a fortune. And this one says, you have style and panache. Okay, sure. And then this one, reads the tool in a in a hurry drinks his tea with a fork oh the fool in a hurry boy i need some reading glasses so that's kind of fun that they have these little little tea fortunes i guess and so basically i just lay these out onto a onto a towel a dish towel and then i'll let these dry probably overnight because they're going to take a little while now i've also wrapped them in a towel and secured the top with like a rubber band and put it in a laundry uh, lingerie bag, zipped it up and threw it in the dryer. And that worked fine for quick, fast drying, but um, I did it in a towel with a rubber band around it because the tea bag, one of them actually broke and you don't want tea all over your dryer. And so um, these are some other tea bags. These are a blueberry tea that my husband loves and these will dry really light. They don't have this really dark coloring so I end up getting some really nice, like this one was one of those. It's not very yellow. Um, this one has a little bit more yellow to it, but they're just different. And you can see like with this one, it's a little bit more yellowy or not yellow, but that kind of that tea color like this one is. All right. So these are going to dry and then I'm going to come back. And when they're dry, I'll show you. Next, 
what I do with them after they have been dried. Once the tea bags are dry, and sometimes they're, if they're not quite dry enough, some of the tea will stick to the bag, but that's okay. I just take some scissors and I trim off. And these are not quite super dry yet, but that's okay. I still can show you what I do. Um, you can see these are the ones that had that really pretty paint color. Those look really nice. I just try to move the tea out a little bit and then trim off. These are those square bags. I really like these too because they kind of are neat. And then I open up. And you can leave these closed or open them up if you want right away. It's kind of up to you. And then I just wipe any excess tea off. You can also run this under water and that will help um, remove some of the tea as well. But it does kind of add to the character, I think, a little bit. So the drier the tea bag, the better. And let's go ahead and do one of these so I can show you opening up this. Like I said, these are just still a little bit damp, but I think it'll be all right. All right, so we're gonna go with this one. And this is one of the ones that's folded, that's long. So I just open it up like that. I like to keep the string on it if possible. And so then I just gently pull it and then I can empty the bag like that. There's a little bit of dampness still in this one. And then if I wanna open it, I just kind of gently tug it and then pull gently to open and these are still a little bit damp so that's why there's still some tea on there but you can gently rub them and that'll help bring them make them a little bit cleaner and like I said you if you're really careful you can do it with a little bit of water but the drier the tea bag the better this process and so that's one of the tea bags that was um, the long tea bag that's folded and that's it that's all I do to prepare the tea bags and then I just keep them in a little stack. Um, I have the bigger ones I keep mostly laying flat. And then if I keep these more squared, and I don't quite cut them open yet, because I don't cut them all open, like this one's been, but I can, I like to keep them in pieces too, uh, or keep them as the full tea bag that I can then, if I decide to trim them, I can trim them later. And then I have a little, a little tin, and then inside the tin I just, I just stick the ones that have, have not been cut open, the square ones, the smaller ones, and then I just leave those in that, and then I have my stack of the larger ones. And so that's how I prepare the tea bags once they're dry, and then I have my stash that I can start working with. I'd like to share with you um, just a little bit of how I'm gonna approach my 100 day project where I'm gonna be making 100 tea bag papers. And they're all gonna vary in size, but the way that I'm approaching this is that um, I have my tea bags, I have all the ones that you know I've been using for, in you know, that I have saved that are in my stash. I have uh, pastels that I'm gonna use. I have pencils, watercolor pencils. I have my watercolors. Those are nearby, so I'm gonna be using those as well. So I've got my watercolors and I have a couple of different cases of those. So I'll be using watercolors. And I have clear and white gesso, so I'll be using those. I also have some acrylic paints, so I have a variety of just some acrylic paints I'll be using. I'm gonna be using um, instant coffee. Um, I have a variety of brushes. I have some other inks. I have liquid inks. I have spray inks. So I'll be using some of those as well. So I have a host of different things I'm planning on using. And of course I have other acrylic paints and other pencils that I have, mark making tools. And then I have a little dish I'm gonna fill with gesso and I'll use that. Over to the right, I have my palettes. What I'm gonna be using for my palettes are gonna be uh, deli paper. I'm gonna be using uh, regular, uh, just plain white paper. This is True Ray construction paper. It's one of my favorites. So that I can reuse these palettes 
into these papers that I'm going to be doing. And then I have other papers. I have some watercolor paper. This is a thinner, um, I think this is a hot press. I have a variety of papers that I'll be using. And then I have these because the way that I'm going to approach this is I find that it's often hard for me to just sit down and then start creating on a blank paper. That that's, doesn't work great for me. So what I like to do is I like to take my work surface paper. I've been doing this for years, what I call my under paper, whether it's true ray construction paper, whether it's newsprint, any of that. And here's some pieces that I have now that are on my table. And you can see these are just the, the cast offs. This is what I'm working on. This is what's underneath. And as I work, uh, you'll see this one's a great example. I've got this one down. I had been, I actually cut this one because I had been working with it. And I just, I mark on it, I paint on it, and then eventually I'll turn it over, I'll keep working on it. And then this becomes the foundation of these papers I'm gonna make. I will take these and then I will cut them. And so this one is already started. I still might do some more on this, but you can just see they're just random papers. And some of these have gesso on them, some of them don't. Um, but this one is one of my favorites because it's, you know, there's a lot already going on in here. It's where I can test colors of my pencils and my pastels. Um, I can paint on it, I can mark on it, and then I just, like I said, I flip it around until I say, yeah, this is done. And this one's really relatively um, new. It hasn't been completed yet. So let me show you um, a few that I've already done that were under paper that while I was painting, I would work on it and I would do some more and I would rotate these papers. Just random kind of thoughtless stuff, just playing. And then I take them and I cut them and then these will become the foundations for my project. So let me show you the ones that I've already cut and that'll kind of give you some insight into kind of the process and how I go about it. Okay, so these are some papers that were on my work surface. And again, I did a lot with these and some of these I will do a lot on them and sometimes I won't. And so these are just, this is just the under paper that I kind of played with. And then I cut them into, this one was cut into six pieces. So this one is ready now. And sometimes I'll even glue paper down. It just depends. But this was one big piece and then I cut it. And then this one was newsprint. So I'll kind of play these down. I think this one was a little bit larger. I think this one I got was able to cut nine pieces or more out of this one. Yeah, there's quite a few pieces on this. And this is just one big large piece of newsprint. And I just played with it in this big format. This one I did a lot more with than I did on this um, the previous one I showed you. And so now I will go into these and I will glue paper down and I will put tea bags on them and I will finish them. So the way that I think I'm going to be approaching the 100 day project is rather than sitting down and creating like one paper a day, I'm working on these in stages. So I'll work on like a, a big piece or I'll work on the under paper, then I'll cut them and maybe some of them will be smaller. You know, maybe some of them will just be five by five and they won't be that big. I'm not limiting myself to any particular size. Then I also have my um, eco dyed paper that I made um, in one of my classes and then I will use these and I'll paint on these. I'll probably use these with some clear gesso and then I can go over them with watercolor and acrylics and pastels and whatever feels, you know, whatever I want to do. And then I'll add the tea bags into them. So I am going to incorporate the tea bags in various ways into these. So again, like I said, I would see this, I'd probably play around with this a little bit more. And then I would go ahead and cut it. And these would be the starters for my papers. And so here's a really good example. And this is so much easier to really just kind of start on that than it is to start with one piece of blank paper. And I could still do that. I could still come in here and add watercolor on here and maybe pencil marks and kind of prepare it. 
and then sit it aside and let it dry. And then maybe on day three, I come back to it and then I finish it or I work on it. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna limit myself to um, too many rules, but I wanted you to have an idea um, if you're gonna follow along on kind of how I am approaching this. Uh, because I feel like I want to do this for 100 days, but I also want it to be doable and manageable, and I want to have fun with it. And this is the way that I'm going to approach it so that I can um, keep up with it and do it. And this way, I can incorporate all of these tools and supplies into it with my starters, and then I'll have whew, a yummy stack at the end. And I might even decide on some of these that maybe I don't want the full sheet. I just want this small little bit that I wanna play with. But I wanted you to see basically kinda of how I was gonna approach this. And if you have any questions, let me know.